welcome to Blackwater D and D. This is Chatwater, and I am definitely Sean Deppner, your lovable host for sure, <laughs> Mr. Deppner. That's my name, Mr. Deppner. Uh, <laughs> um, I am joined today by uh, Matthew and Emma to Hello. talk about some Blackwater lore. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. Oh, wait, no. Sean makes that noise improperly. Like, blam, 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 blam. I feel like if you are Sean Depter tonight, you have to carry on Sean's art along. I don't Absolutely know if you've you caught do. the art oh, along. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've packed up so much of my art stuff, but okay, I have one piece of paper. Uh, it's a, it's <laughs> a menu that a friend made. That is all and then I'm going to grab a pencil. Okay. I'll do some art. Who should I art today? Who do you want? That's the whole thing. Ooh. Is you get to art whoever you want to art. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Sean always gosh. chooses for himself. Okay, good I fork in the chat is so you can good see. fork in the chat is also right, which Bugatti. is that. Yeah, thank you very much. No. Yeah, we're get right on track. Bugatti. Sean's here. Okay, when <laughs> when I was asked uh, to play the wonderful Sean Duffner tonight, I did ask him, uh, "Do you need me to bring car-related mnemonic, 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 mnemonic?" Mnemonic. Mnemonic. Mnemonic devices. And uh, she said, God, please no. <laughs> I said, get the fuck out of here. Absolutely not. Yeah, you need to get the fuck out of here and get in my Bugatti. Jesus. Let's go. Viper of the sky. Yes. Thank you so you much, get, Sean. It's okay. so good for you to be here. I, okay, you guys each get I, one. I, and that's I gotta it. Get a you've, used it. you've used it for tonight. That's it. You've used no, it. Emma. No, 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 no. I want one more. <laughs> Just I want to save it for later. Just one, more, just want one more for later. <laughs> just one more. <laughs> please, Emma. For, for a rainy day. <laughs> for a rainy day, Emma, please. If you. I'm we're sorry. not. We're not. Sometimes, sometimes I'm helpful to Emma, and sometimes I'm just another Matthew. Yeah. Hi. It's me, Sharpie. Okay, so I'm glad we've agreed. One more at get some a point. Yeah, get a Sharpie. So she's going she's gonna to get a Sharpie? And we're going to do yeah. some art and then I'm going to do some announcements and then we're yeah. going to hop into some, the intro and then we're going to do some re episode recap. Gee, if and... only I had writing utensils in my purse. <laughs> <laughs> I just reached in here. That's how I many mean, As someone who is an educator, I would be shocked if you did not have writing implements in your purse. Um, so many. Okay. So uh, uh, you can decide to draw whoever you want to draw. Uh, and I'm going to jump into some announcements. Uh, also, we will not be doing any uh, like of the deep dive history tonight because all of us were there for it. So we don't need to teach anybody. Um, and Sean and Yanis were not. So we will start. We doing are the that. master's course. We are. We are. This is, this is your master class uh, in, in lore. So a big thank you to our sponsors, Legend Craft, a nerdy woodworking company from Cal as and Silverwing Armory selling paper products for all your RPG needs. Check them out, and if anything tickles your fancy, enter the code BLACKWATER at checkout for a discount. Legendcraft also has uh, a new Kickstarter that is like days away from closing. It's part of their Make 100 campaign. They uh, make like D2 flip coins um, that double as an 8-space tracker for whatever you need in your game. Type exclamation point Legendcraft to get in on that through our exclusive Blackwater link, which you love and you love to support us because you're good people and you care about us and we care about you. It's mutual. It's great. Um, love as always to our dice goddess Keisha. Uh, check her out at fairy dragon underscore dice. Uh, her commissions are open. So DM her for all your math rock needs because you need more dice in your life. You just, you, you right there. You need more dice in your life. This is me giving you permission to have more dice. So go do that for yourself. Um, also, our campaign artist uh, is the amazing Tiana Kovacevic, and you can find her at, at miss.marston on Instagram. And all of our official art for this campaign and beyond is done by her because we love her, and she's so kind and generous with her time, and she loves us. Fun fact, and I know I've said this before, Tiana was our first fan before we started streaming. Uh, I True. used to send her the uh, episode recaps that you folks now get to listen to on YouTube. I used to send those to her and she was like, please give me more. Please, I need to know more. And she would be like, what happened in your episode this week? I need to know more. Um, so yeah, she was our first fan and she was like, I'm just going to draw art of you. Do you want art of your characters? And we were like, yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, so that was great. Um, and her commissions are open as well. So get in on that if you want art. Um, our Discord 
is a lovely place. Go come join our Discord. Uh, type exclamation point Discord to find a, find the link to come hang out while we're streaming. Hang out here with us in the chat because, you know, that's where all the cool kids are. Also, round two of the Gravelies is up on our Discord, which is our... Uh, it'll be our awards for our one year stream anniversary, which is happening uh, like under a month from now because we've been doing this for 11 months. Holy bananas. Um, so if you're not right. on our Discord, why the heck are you not on our Discord? Go do that. And go vote. Um, a big thank you to the folks who subscribe to us. Don't forget to re-up your subscriptions if that's something you want to do. We also have a coffee if you want to support the show above and beyond. Type exclamation point donate, donate to figure out how to do that. And thanks for telling your friends and about the show and coming to hang out with us. Um, Lore Club, do you want to get... If you you like Lore. You're here on Chatwater. That's, you, you like this. You like this. Don't lie to yourself. You like this a lot. Uh, come get involved. You love in it. Lore. You love it. Uh, come get your lore gremlin, just like me. Um, if you want to get involved in chronicling our history from the beginning, our amazing mod, the New Experience Network, has set up an amazing community lore project. Type exclamation point lore in the chat and find a link to a Google form to get in contact with him and participate in the fun. Programming this week, Wednesday. We are gearing up for our all-party paladin one-shot. Uh, it is in celebration of Len's birthday. Uh, we are uh, baby paladins who have just taken the oath of the party um, and it's going to just be a heckin' good time. So please come hang out with us. It's going to be real stupid and real silly. Um, and that's Wednesday, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time this week. And, of course, we are back on Saturday for our main campaign. So if this is the first time you're joining us tonight uh, or you've been with us for ages, thank you so much. Um, we love you immensely. And thank you for hanging out with us at our table. We love that you're here. And we're so happy about that stuff. Um, please, please show us your art along. Jen, a.k.a. Sean Deppner. <laughs> okay. Okay, I drew you two um, masterpieces from our master class today. Uh, the first one, which I'm less proud of, it took less time, is uh, the Viper of the Sky. Oh, Obviously geez. very cool. He looks a little bit like Trogdor. Uh, OG Homestar runner fans. Um, but this one I'm way more proud of, um, regardless of the fact that the Bugatti kind of looks like toast. Uh, this is... Uh, 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 the Lightkeeper's uh, riding shotgun, quite literally, because Kokanee's got two guns ablazing. Um, and that's Yana uh, in the back with Wiggles, uh, because we've been along for this ride for the whole time. Bam, bam, uh, bam. I also really love the headlights. I, I'm most proud of the car. This is the best really car I've good. ever it's drawn. A really good, it's a really good car. I hate the Bugatti jokes, and I love that car. I would, I would, that's a great car. Um, vroom, vroom, get a Malora mobile. <laughs> That's I would please rebrand that the Laura Mobile. I'm very into that. Um, speaking of which, <laughs> if you have any questions, um, in please feel free to throw those up in the chat this evening. Also, as Jen just said, you are looking at other than Tim, the only three people who have been in this campaign from the very beginning. We've been there for all of it. Jen and I have never missed a session. Matt's only missed like one. So we know we know everything. We know. So if you have any questions for us, just feel free to ask. Um, we won't be doing too much of a deep dive into the history uh, today. Um, we're going to be mostly talking about our previous episodes. So with that, we're going to roll that intro. Yeah. <laughs> created yeah, in the yeah, studio yeah 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 chowder <laughs> chowder 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 yeah 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 okay we're back <laughs> we are super back uh <laughs> we've we've been clapping the whole time it's been such an energy <laughs> such a nice mood um oh, oh okay boy. okay babies oh boy let's talk about we saturday start. well i mean let's start at the the beginning once upon a time and the dream palace and the dream palace okay talk to me about kindry's Talk to me about Kindry's Dream Palace. What's going on for y'all? Talk to me about it. Wow. Oh. How do we feel about Kindry? How do we feel about Kindry? Kindry's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm so deeply excited about learning how to make my own dream palace. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that we all just have books about making your own dream palace now. It's 
I that leads to so many one shot possibilities where we're all trapped inside like Finn and Stream. Oh, it's just God. like a lot of working out and like <laughs> we're all just forced to work and out like, all the time. and like milk. I don't know. Uh, milk based <laughs> workout beverages. Yeah, I, I I there is like something about Kendry's naivety that is yeah. just like it's a lot. Cause you're just mm-hmm. like, you're, you're so, she's so kind and she's very like, she has had very limited physical, like li- no physical contact and very li- little like emotional contact with an- anybody else other than, you know, the few Kalistar that she's let in and, or that, that have come into her dream palace as well as Halora and Limerick, like that's it. And here we are just like waltzing into this girl's dream, pa- like her, her sanctuary and she's just like, please come sit. Let me tell you, please dump your all your troubles on me. I was like a very much I was like, Oh, we just unburdened on a young woman who doesn't have any of the life skills to deal with this. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm really curious about and I don't know if you either of you caught this too, but like she was talking about the differences in the Kalishtar, that like some of them are good and some of them will like respect the boundaries that people have between dreams and then some of them are like uh, i'm just gonna waltz in and do whatever the fuck i want yeah weird energy mm. i mean i guess if you live your entire life asleep yeah matt you look like you had a thought i i was i was just sort of playing away like did i i'm trying to i am trying to think back with exactly what she said about that um about whether because I, I don't remember if it was like her saying that the other Kalistar like were like aggressively like coming in or if they were just sort of like, I'm just moving around. Yeah. Going place to place. I think a lot um, of it was they were kind of like they moved around and didn't understand the like social convention mm-hmm. of not going into other people's dreams is kind yeah. of how I how I interpreted it. Yeah, yeah, I guess that was I was trying to I, that was I was trying to determine malice, I believe, is what mm-hmm. I was trying to remember think about. Yeah, I yeah, think she, she, she go ahead, Jen. She, she did say like they change things like without knowing they change things quite often. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I like when she said that, I just imagined somebody like leaning against a coffee table and it changes into a tree stump, you know, like yeah. like it just picks up some of their energy or something like that is kind of how I interpreted that. Which kind of makes sense when you think about it, because dreams are like uh, my dreams are very like flowy and weird um, and change from second to second. So Mm -hmm. it makes sense if that's like your like natural ability to like manipulate dreams that you might not even know you're doing it as you're wondering. Totally. And I think that the the, the difference for me that I'm picking up on is because I know a little bit about Kalishtar. I know that like she talked and Kendra talked a bit about this, too, that is like they're descendant from the quarry. And the quarry, to my knowledge, are like not good. <laughs> They're like not good, not good dream folk. Kalistar are like better morally mm-hmm. dream right. folk, more nomadic peoples. Where the quarry are like, we're gonna come and wreak havoc in your dreams. So, yeah, or or the concept of getting lost in a dream. Yeah, yeah or just lost wandering from dream to dream. Yeah, that's a nightmare scenario. Yeah. Quite literally, I guess. Yeah. I'm I'm just so excited to see like if people if people in the party develop their own dream spaces, like what they end up being. Kokani would have so much time for tinkering. He would. Letters would be like, this is an excellent opportunity for me to do business. He'll do like the the Oh, he'll find a way to do conduct business me- meetings in his in his dreams. No, I saw the wheels turning where letters was like franchise opening in the dreamland (laughs) (laughs) college stars come visit my business (laughs) yeah you're not you're not wrong i don't even know i don't even know what neppy would do in a dream palace you got more hours for prayers (sighs) neppy prays a lot like she already prays a lot you get like a solid you could have a full (laughs) full dream palace and also get a solid three more prayers in a day i mean my girl loves Good to pray. Testing. She loves to pray. So nice little silent meditation in prayer <laughs> in your dreams. It's a good time. What would Yana, I need to know what Yana would do 
in a dream palace. Yana already has one. She has a mansion. She can make whatever she wants all the time. Um, I think the idea of it doesn't super appeal to her because uh, she already doesn't like anything that has to do with being like Halora. Mm. Um, so the idea of her like doing stuff in her dreams just like seems like a bad, bad idea to yeah. Yeah. Speaking of which, talk to me about. Um, I don't know if anyone else felt it, but there was a there was a there was a percolating something, like right at the end while we were leaving um, the Dream Palace too, and I think it was a lot of it was happening with Callie. Um, I noticed a bit of that too. Talk to me about what was going on for for you guys in that at that time, because I know I know Spooky had some reservations about a lot of stuff, and so did Kokanee. Talk to me about that. Me first. Go for it. Okay. Um, You're Sean Deppner. You jump in. That's what yeah, you do. That's yeah, your job. Oh, right, 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 right. right. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think um, I'm, I'm comfortable sharing it. It's it, one of those like actionable and at the table things, but I think we've already kind of like seen it from yeah. Yana. Like she's very uncomfortable, like increasingly so with the idea of just taking items when we find them. Like, mm-hmm you know, like picking up useful like spell components and things like that, like might like be okay to her, but like the items, I think it was the items in the attic that really set her off, like mm-hmm. the relics of other civilizations, like Cogman nuts, not Cogman. Um, who's the, who's the faith, the, mm, who's the robot man lying on the table? Etcher. Etcher, yeah. Not Etcher so much, although originally when she didn't know the story behind Etcher, that really pissed her off that like yeah. somebody's remains were torn apart and like worked upon on the table. Um but like the relics of like the Illyrian ships and things like that that she's kept and like not given back to people um started to make her really uncomfy. Um yeah, and she's, like, thinking more and more about, like, the things she's taken. I mean, like, you're talking to a girl who, like, took pants that ended up being possessed. Um, so she <laughs> has a lot of thoughts about items <laughs> and whether or not you should take them. Um, so, yeah, there was a lot of that going on. And then also a lot of, like, uh, inner thoughts. Uh, I think when Yana meets a lonely, like, female wizard... Um, She sees, like, parts of herself in that person. Like, she was a very lonely person for a long time. Um, So, yeah. She's very spooked by that. And Halora kind of called Yana and Nepi a little bit out on that, about Mm. the items. How was that for Yana? Yeah, I think, think, like, uh, when she when she called, when she, like, asked Halora about it, like, she knew, like, she carries stuff on her, like, that that does that doesn't belong to her um but yeah like more specifically like the relics like from the sky ship and things like that that like specifically don't belong to like you know it's one thing to like take like something off of someone who's gone but to take something from a people who's still there feels icky to me personally like jen um so it feels icky to yana Mm -hmm. So yeah, she's definitely taking a closer look at her items. Yeah, I I mean, I I struggle with this a lot. I with like, we're showing up here just covered head to toe in magical gear. You know, we went to the tower and we found a cool hourglass and a scroll and we took it. Or we went to a boat, like literally an ancient wreck and took the cool stuff from it. That's the, the mandolin we're carrying around. And so... I'm I'm quite hesitant to then show up at Halora's house and be like, "How dare you do the this thing while we're also, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. like from the stuff we've pulled, like like we have all of Aeon's or Aegis's stuff, yes, um, which are literally just like things we found in a burial site, yeah, and took from a person and and have yeah. been using." I was so ready to, like, I have been so reticent to part, not to, like, not on the fact of, like, ooh, I don't want to get rid of this item. Like, the Death Shadow amulet that Nepi carries is a wonderfully powerful item. 
and it has like both saved my butt and almost cost my butt a couple times. It's a powerful item unless it's activated in a bad situation <laughs> and then it's bad. Um, but like I have been reticent to unattune to it because it's a relic of the Raven Queen with the Raven iconography. And I'm like, oh my gosh, if Nepi unattunes just what the f- bad shit, bad shit's going to happen, at least while I have this brand on my back. And, um, and then, you know, when Halora was like, when Nepi put the amulet on the table, I was going to be like, you, I will give you this back. If you feel like it is better in your possession, you can have it. Cause there's so much of Nepi that like, doesn't want that amulet. She's like, I will use it because it is, because I think I have to. But if if someone can take this away from me, <laughs> then that would be nice, please. I would like not to be connected to the Raven Queen in mm-hmm. any way anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, New Experience Network um, uh, threw uh, a question up in the chat talking about what uh, was Kokanee thing, but I think it could apply to all of us. Like, what were we thinking when Callie left? Because I think the, you know, it's like I know in the previous session had, we'd seen the kind of like the brewing of stuff with, you know, Callie's, like between Callie and Halora, um, when Callie was like, well, I don't buy children. That was in the previous episode. Um, how was that for you two when Callie left? I mean, I I think for me, like, you could tell that, that Callie wasn't, like, jazzed on what was going on um and kokanee's in a different spot than Callie is right now i think all of us are in slightly different spots um mm-hmm. but you know i kokanee's at the like listen i'll take whatever from basically anybody to save the world like we're taking we're giving secrets to vecna like we're we have we're, reached that time. We, we're at that we're at that point if yes. she's going to give me something that'll help we're i'm going to take it um yeah. but at the same t- so at the same time it was like okay these guys have got it with Halora you don't need me here anymore yeah. i am going to go check on Callie just to make sure that like she's all right um but yeah i think i think it's like her the way she feels is totally fine and reasonable and justified but um i just like if we didn't follow every piece of help we could right now and then like we stop the the Raven or the Matron of Vengeance from killing Cato by like this much, and we could have had that much. Yeah. Like, like we, I, I'm not going to take that chance. Yeah, as best it, as we can. Um, I, I think it brings up an interesting like thought um, for me. Um, having listened to Nad Pod which like the whole premise of the first campaign for not another D&D podcast is like it's the campaign after the campaign and you're walking through like the like the remnants of like an already successful D&D party and what that effect that had on the world um and I totally agree like we're in dire straits and like need to take the help where we get it like Yana's not saying no to Halora either but I I'm very interested like and the sort of fallout that creates like yeah. when we take stuff or when we you know i mean like we sicked the raven queen on an entire city like mm-hmm. like to like just like because the ends justify the means like so there's a lot of like really interesting fallout that happens when like heroes make very desperate decisions which is like the place that tim puts us in all the time or we put ourselves in exactly, like, <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah. And I think that's it's, such, it's interesting. That's such a wonderful point you bring up too, because it's like I remember that there was a moment in the previous episode where, you know, we where Neppy had shared that like, okay, the matron had come calling, and Callie was like, I wasn't mad then, I'm mad now. Right. And it was yeah. just like you can. I think it's this amazing like snapshot. And I talk about like the quote. The quote I use a lot is the snapshot of humanity. It's like we you're were we're seeing this microcosm of humanity where like you can be both like so caring for someone and you know, their actions, but also just being like, I can't believe that this is where we are. And this is what has happened because of what 
occurred. So I think that there's, I think that there's a nice, like, you can hold two feelings about someone or something at the same time, knowing that Halora has done things that a lot of us don't agree with. And also knowing that she may be one of our best chances for help. Oh yeah. Right. I mean, that's, that's the other flip side of like Yana being terrified of being Halora. She also feels like a very, she feels like she could have seen a very justified path where she could have ended up almost exactly the same. Right. Like she could have, like if she had not met all of you, city would have been lost it almost already was by the time you met her yeah right so like it's a yeah it's a very like interesting parallel that yana sees like she she sees a lot of things like that she likes about halora but she also like you know sees what happens when you're like alone and like so driven towards knowledge like it's almost addictive um yeah 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 that's and i think there was there was a moment i think you know, um, before we went over, you know, when we decided to talk to the Inquisitor, um, for me, that was like, okay, we are giving Vecna stuff. Yeah. We're giving Vecna stuff now. Yeah. Uh, Ferex asked a good question about that in the chat, actually, about the Inquisitor. Ooh, yeah. Let's get to that um, one, too. How has the Inquisitor's secret spill uh, changed your perception of the prophecy about the Arya becoming a duet? Has that changed anything for y'all? Ooh, not yet. No, I don't know if I have enough ties between what's happening with the Raven Queen and the the stuff with the Legasus Empire and the Queen and if it is Korra and that kind of stuff. I don't know if there's enough ties there for me yet. Um, I think the stuff around the like the aria becoming a duet is is coming. I just don't think it's here quite yet. I think Adonis has something to play with that, um, because from you know from what we know, the the mandolin is connected to the harmonic keeper, and so is Nepi's ring, and Adonis is the harmonic keeper. So for me, not quite. Um, yeah, and I don't know if I can see past, like, I am not thinking past the next 12 hours of Nepi's life. I don't know if I can think that far. Because um, the next 12 hours of these characters' lives can change the course of the entire world. And that's what you get when you play high-level d <laughs> That's cool. That's well, fine. One of the things that's, that's really, like that's really mechanically difficult about the Arya becomes a duet is you take any bad guy that exists currently and Tim just has to add one piece of information and all of a sudden it's a duet. Yeah. So like anything, you know, you could, you could have like Raven queen and then Tim just like at the last seconds, like, and here's this little thing. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, you know, duet. Like it just, it's so, you know, or Cora or Legasa, like it could be anything. Totally. Um, I think there was a really interesting moment, like, you know, cause we went in to see the Inquisitor the first time and then we were like, Ooh, we can't, we can't decide what questions we're going to ask and what information we're going to share in here. So going back. Um, but also I want, before we get to the Inquisitor, what was everyone, um, you know, going back to the new experience networks question, what was everyone's thoughts on seeing Limerick? uh super concerned uh yeah. super concerned about this like yana is now seeing him as like a boy like <laughs> you know who's who's living with like not an abusive like parent but like a detached like yeah. mother figure and like yeah yeah icky icky she put him in the cloak room for a timeout that's a room with no walls uh a room with no walls and no yeah. contact like he, he obviously couldn't go see kendry in his dreams so there's no yeah. no nothing yeah yeah it was it's i sad. was i was like and just like knowing in his heart, like it, like just the way he was talking about things, the resentment, the resign, the resignation. There's the word mm-hmm. when he was like, when we were like, we have like, you know, we talked yeah. to Kendry and she said she wants you to go see the world. And I think what we were what we were talking about the other day, I think this was after the session about like, you know, if you 
I think Len said it that it, like if Len was you know if Callie was in the position where Kamea was like go and go see the world she's like no I'm not gonna go I'm not gonna leave and here we are trying to convince this person to leave mm-hmm. at least the body of the woman he loves yeah I don't know who yeah, it's tr- yeah. it's a tricky situation too because it's like you're leaving but like you'll see her all the time mm-hmm. But, like, you're leaving her with this person that, like, doesn't hold you in very high regard. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. that's the tricky thing, too. Like, Halora, like, obviously, like, cares for Kindry and, like, yeah. Uh, but, like, doesn't care for Limerick in the same way. But, I, I, but I'm interested, too. Like, Kindry's, like, been asleep her whole life and, like, lives in a dream palace. Like, I don't know what. Uh, that parenting situation looks like like go to your room like I'm always there Mm -hmm. Um, but like yeah I wonder like how different it would have been if Kendry like I don't know wasn't always in her her dream palace if there would be a different relationship there yeah she's a very easy like word to have like self-sufficient you know yeah um the new experience network just popped in the chat like because it looked like you were all you all were relieved but none of you would release your breath and an overwhelming feeling of anxiety and sadness it was powerful i think he's talking about uh what he messaged right above about seeing codus oh codus oh okay yeah, yeah. we'll talk about that when we see Codus. When we see, when we see oh Codis. gosh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, and the re- i think we i think if we talk about the word to, i can't wait to talk about the like the would return to wolfreen part of this thing um but yeah i think there was so much like held in that moment with seeing limerick of being like we are gonna take you out of here like we promised but not the way we promised yeah, yeah. I, I simultaneously felt like we were doing every the like we were acting in his best interests, and also simultaneously letting him down. Yeah, like we couldn't do this for you, or the situation was so that we couldn't just take Kindry and go. Yeah, it didn't work I, like that. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a it's a bad situation for him from his point of view. Like it does. It's not a nice experience, but the reality is, is like. He can't just take her if she doesn't want to go. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. And that's, you know, I'm not like, oh man, I, w- I feel bad about that. Like mm-hmm. I, I feel bad for Limerick, but I'm not sitting here being like, man, Blackwater should have done better about that. Like, yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think there was anything that we could have done to convince Kendry to go. No. That That's one of the other things I'm wondering about Kendry is that like, like, is there, is there, like, work, like, that she needs to do? Because that's kind of, like, what she leaned on. Or, like, is she just, like, scared to leave? Like, is it is it both? Well, like, I think a lot of that we saw was, a bit of both. I think, I think that was held in the conversation that Tim had us all take our headphones off of um, with Callie. I think she, she got a little bit of insight there. Um, to it do you think do you think she's trying to like find ways in her dream palace to help halora for all the years halora has helped her i mean maybe yeah she's yeah. like she's she's not done yet because like as long as she stays she can help halora yeah she feels indebted to her yeah probably like if you've had someone who's taking care of you your whole life and they've been working and trying to do this just one thing mm-hmm. i don't know so- I don't know. Yeah, I I, th- I imagine that it's possible that we're not done with Kindry, that because we haven't we haven't seen um, we haven't seen the rest of her dream palace. What mm-hmm. she's been what she's been working on, what she's been building. There, and and one piece of information that she said that's super important is that not everybody in the dream plane is from this dimension. Yes. And what that means is that as far as I can tell, we are worrying about someone extra dimensionally coming here. And this is the first time we have seen anything that allows for any variety of extra dimensional travel. That is true. You're correct. And so you have, you have Kindry saying she's not done here, but not being clear with what she is not done with. Yeah. There is a scenario where she is through some means of, you know, 
who knows, maybe Aegis came and talked to her from the future uh, and was like, you need to prepare for this. Like, but yeah. there might be something happening where she has specific work that'll tie into the Legasis Empire coming sort of possible arc on the horizon. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I had like a crazy thought, which is why I asked Talora specifically where she got Kendry. Um, Cause I was like, what if, what if she was in the bassinet? Yeah. That yeah. that was like my first crazy thought, and I was like, no, probably not. We're probably fine. I mean, she's probably I don't not think... working on stuff in her dream palace. I don't think anything is off the table with the stuff around the Legasis, like that that arc. Like we know so little. Like we have to go talk to Adonis and stuff like that about it, and try and figure out that kind of stuff. And I can imagine he will know something in his own way. Um, and he'll tell us in a way that is freaky and strange and don't worry yourself about it, Neppy. It'll be something like that. Um, or come rescue me, Neppy, you're my only hope, or I don't know. Uh, but I think there'll be some, I think he'll have something, some involvement with it. He's been fucking with the timeline and doing something weird and we'll have to go rescue him again and see what he's been doing or deal with the implications of what's been happening um tell me a little bit about oh the inquisitor please tell me about what was going on for y'all in the inquis the room with the inquisitor because i have oh, yeah. feelings you you were asking a question before we get there oh, like yes. we, we stepped into the room and then we came back out you were yeah. gonna point something out yeah 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 there was a moment thank you jen there was a moment where we i felt i don't know if you two felt this as well but it felt like that we rejoined as a party that there was, it was kind of like there was some tension. And then the moment where we were kind of deciding, what are we willing to give up knowledge yeah. wise to this guy? And there was a moment where I felt like we all rejoined and it uh, was just kind of like that thing of like, we need to join now. Like we need to be joined in this because there is so many opportunities for things to tear us and pull us those like wonderful, hard, difficult, beautiful moral quandaries that, that, we've been thrown in this game and that we seem to really relish in as a group um, of players. But like, I don't know if y'all felt it. I think when we were talking about like, you know, we've got to have, like, I know when for me, it was something that was like, okay, if one person wants out of that room, we all go. Like, cause it, for me, like I, I had, I had hearkened back thoughts to the room with Golar where people yeah. was like, if you don't want to see this, don't be here. And I was like, we're not doing that again. We can't do that again. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, I can't remember who said it when Yana, like, stepped out of the room, but she went in there with you, and then, like, there was something about, like, the burden of knowledge, like, like if you don't want to be here, like, if you don't want that burden, like, you can step out, and Yana was like, oh, yep, nope, sure don't, and that's, like, her old instincts kicking in, and, like, not wanting to become a knowledge crazy witch, um, and then, yeah, for me, the moment was like, uh, like Kokani, like pulling her back in. Like, he, I don't know if you did that like on purpose, but oh, fuck, what did you say? It was beautiful. Um, it pulled Yana right back in. Uh, Do you if remember? Halor, if Halor had other people to share those burdens with, she might have not ended up here. Yeah, yeah. Yana was like, oh yeah, that's that's why I'm here. Like, that's why my city is safe. Like, that's why I've gotten this far is because I'm. I have friends like you, like I have a family yeah. that looks out for me. Like I can go into that room, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be okay. One of the like the beautiful strengths of this party is their ability to lean on each other and support each other in like a collect, we can all be leaning. Like if we're all leaning, we can, we can all lean together and it is still supportive. And I think mm -hmm. that was a moment where it's like, we are so like not physically tired of like, you know, I need a long rest, but just like we're all, we have been running. We've essentially been running for a month straight. Our characters have mm. been just booking it for a month straight out of the money hole, you know, after the gods brawls. And then we had a day in Wolfreen, a day and a half in Wolfreen. And then he, we have been in Dresda now for just under two weeks. And it has Gar been. Yang, you mean? Sorry, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We have been in Gar Yang for almost two weeks, not even. And like, it has been. I, I was joking with him. I was like, Blackwater needs a break. I was like, we need a vacation or we're going 
to explode, I think. I've been asking. I've been asking for years for a beach episode. <laughs> Still hoping. Beach arc. Beach arc. I want that. I want a beach episode. Ooh, thanks, Len, for the raid. Aw, thanks, Len. I love thanks, you. Dude. Um, yeah, so tell me what it was like for all y'all in the room with the Inquisitor. Secrets boy. He was... I found him to be fine. I I like the thing that made me very comfortable, you know, as comfortable as one could be in that scenario is that we could leave. Yes. That we had the option to just not engage and that that would be okay. Um and so it 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 sort of ended up just being for me like a little bit like um speak with dead um mm. just with with a little bit of cost attached <laughs> yeah speak with almost dead <laughs> speak with <laughs> speak with some being who may never die maybe oh yeah let's talk about that guy for a second imagine uh, the choices in your life that lead you to being changed in a room with a, a, a bad hand and an eyeball out and vecna s- talking through your so mouth. much bad so vecna, much bad not even once <laughs> not even once just vecna talking through once. your mouth space like the real anti-drug campaign that is vecna. <laughs> <laughs> um, i was yeah i think i want i think <laughs> one of my big things is i wanted to be so careful about what we gave him because mm-hmm. it's like we don't we I, there was no way that we could give him both of the locations of two of the seals i was like that is yeah. a, like a last ditch um that was like that is that is if the cost needs to be super high such Um, bad news bears such bad news bears um and even still the like you know if we if we don't carry if we don't answer like or carry the burden that it's like the literal blood on neppy's hands and it like that was one of the things where he was like where when he's like the matron of vengeance will exact her revenge slowly and i was like oh god our blood like our entire bloodlines like are in every family member everyone you care about your entire bloodline will wear this on them forever and i was like no yeah so no, like thank you no thank you we have to we have we have to k- kill a god is that what's happening I mean, we'll we'll see when we get there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> maybe we can maybe we can talk them out of it. And what do you what do you two think too about like I loved the um, I thought it was so beautiful and poetic the way that, uh, you know what he's the the way that I guess it was Vecna at this point talked about, um the Raven Queen's call for help. I'll read it just in case people missed it. Mm -hmm. Um, The Raven Queen called for help, but the father turned his shoulder, wishing his children eternal life. The architect cared only for the builders. The mother is as fickle as the sea. The moon and her muse lay far across the forest where ears could not hear. The drake flew neath the thunder to stem the bleeding of those pursued by the undying hunger. The hammer fell silent, his forge tainted by the fire of the under king, a secret kept, the rot of guilt. And the knowing one sat quietly in their study, intent on only recording what is, only recording what is, refusing to wield the power of truth. I was like, woof. Everybody's busy. Classic Vancouver. <laughs> no one's going to help when you need it. So the father. Uh, the Raven Queen was like, hey, guys, I, re- I really need help moving away from this knife. Um, and, and every single one of her friends is like, oh, man, I'm so booked that weekend. So uh, I have a previous can't help. Commitment. And she's like, sorry. I'm actually dying. And they're like, lol. <laughs> well, it's fine. Um, so the raven, you know, the father turned his shoulder, meaning Palor. The architect cared only for the builders, Arathis. The mother, uh, Melora, as fickle as the sea. The moon and her muse, being Sehenin and Corellin. 
uh, lying across the forest, which makes sense because uh, they would have been in Fawe Tavar, that's their patron city. The Drake, being Bahamut, um, flew beneath the thunder cord to stem the bleeding of those pursued by the undying hunger. Uh, the hammer, Moradin, fell silent, his forge tainted by the fire of the Under King, which could be Torog. Um, a secret cat, the Rodigil, and the Knowing One, Ayun, refusing to wield the power of truth. Ooh. So I have, a, I have a question for you two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like, Yana, like, hearing that was like, woo, God's made bad choices. Um, how did you two feel, like, knowing that both of your goddesses were like, uh, I can't. Sorry. Or actually, you, well, yours was like directly there and like part and like like part of it, right? Yeah. Um, and then like, yeah, yeah. How do you two feel about your gods and their like involvement in this? Go ahead, Matt. I mean, I I guess it's like a couple things. The first one is that this all happens like dawn war time. Correct, Emma. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So. All I'm going to say is that Arathis lived by about this much. Uh, she, like she was, she was busy. Um, and, and that's sort of where, where that like, she, I, I don't, I mean, from what I would guess is that she wasn't just like indifferent to the occurrence of this, oh. but that, that, she she you know she barely lived as is and likely would have lost everything if she had gone yeah um yeah that that sentence like it, it makes me wonder about like all the other sentences too right she only cared for the builders if it's the time of the dawn war then like her people were fighting yeah right yeah. like her, like it's not it's not like they were building stuff like it's it's i find the phrasing of that yeah. whole thing very interesting and like painted and in one light and so what I was going to say is, is so like, if you imagine that instead of gods, these are like kings and you're saying like the king of, of Svelan didn't go to the aid of the, the queen of Wolfreen because he only cared about his own people. But the scenario is, is that like, what's actually happening in that moment is that they're getting their entire city sieged. He's not going to leave. Yeah. Like, like, and so when they say it like that, you sort of say like, okay, so this is not what, you know, it is more complicated than this. Yeah. Yes. Um, and and likely the words of Vecna about w him spinning it exactly how he wants about how the gods were terrible and betrayed the Raven Queen is not going to be it's an not the unbalanced yeah. assessment of, of what happened there. Um. And so, yeah, I mean, Kogan, unless the Ra the Rathus does something like atrocious that is like obviously indefensible, it's like really not his place to judge whether Rathus chose uh, 2000 years ago to save her people or help the Raven Queen. Like, mm -hmm. that's like not a lot. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think it's, you know, like, I think you're absolutely right. Like at that time, Caradoc would have been completely under siege. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the death of the Raven Queen happened just before Arathis was separated from her mortal body. Tim, mm -hmm. please correct me in the chat if I'm wrong. Um, or maybe I don't know. But um my sense is my sense is, yeah, like Arathis was doing everything she could to fight. But of course, of course, just as you were saying, Matt, it's painted from the hurt of the Raven Queen. Here is yeah. Vecna spilling the deep dark secrets of the why the Raven Queen wants vengeance. And of course she has had two thousand three hundred and seventy six years to sit in the negative energy plane and stew. Mm -hmm. about it and if i had 2376 years to be pissed off about something i'd be fucking riled up too i yeah i i also think like i i don't i don't I, when i imagine what is happening there i don't imagine it being her sitting there stewing i imagine like the dagger goes into her and this dagger has been specifically done to get us to this point to kill her yeah well, like, I imagine that it's possible. Tim says two sieges were generally happening at the same time. Yeah, Arathis was busy. Okay. Um, the, the... Call back later. 
Well, like, yeah, like you imagine like you're fighting <laughs> to save your city and all your people and they're like, Raven Queen, you know, you feel in the like God phone, like, hey, Raven Queen's dead. You're like, oh no, that's oh, really terrible. Yeah. But I, I'm, I, I got to do this, you know? Yes. Um, well, it's, it's another one of those like tough decisions that like people have, that has a follow mm -hmm. and like it cool that, that the gods can make mistakes like that too. I but, love Or not that. mistakes, but like, you know, like there's that, really no other choice. That their, yeah. that their choice is what I love about the way that, that, you know, Tim and I have talked about this a lot, that in this campaign, like in some campaigns, the gods are these far off entities that have very little mm -hmm. influence on the world. But here the gods are so close. They're so close. And I think that's also, you know, influenced by the fact that you have two heads of religions in the party. So there is going to be strong religious ties there. But I think that, like, it's so cool to know that, like, these gods aren't, they're not perfect mm -hmm. by any means. And their, their actions also have consequences, not only just amongst the mortals who serve them or don't serve them, but amongst each other that they're dealing with their own type of infighting and uh, bickering and drama, just like everyone else is. Um, yeah. But so I, I, we, I was sidetracked by, by Tim's correction. Um, go for it. I imagine the Raven queen sitting in this plane being like, what happened? Like, Oh my God, what happened? Yeah. And then like hearing like, just this like subtle whisper of Vecna, like they betrayed you mm. and like the dagger, like there, you know, there and just sort of like it corrupting her over those years. And so I, I think there's a scenario where she is not like mistaken and st or not mistaken, but like stewing on her revenge and angry. It's Vecna, like having 2000 years to twist her yeah into this thing that sees the way the world the way that he sees it which is all twisted and dark and you know intentionally of, intentionally misleading as as uh, however is required uh cool. to create cool the thing required to kill the gods the way he yeah. wanted to yeah yeah yeah, yeah i like that to kill a god yeah. Well, and I mean, the dagger was, you know, the dagger is called, I'll read it from the, from what Tim sent again. The dagger is called Eternal's Undoing, um, knowledge stolen in service of the Elder Eye. This dagger forged by the hand of Bane in the Hell Forge of Asmodeus has been imbued by the poison distilled from the blood of Zaheer. So we've got some bad gods. We got some morally on the, on the evil side of the pantheon, like this dagger was created and had runes of the chained oblivion in it. Um, like it was glowing yellow when they saw the story of it in the, um, in the, the tomb of the Raven queen, you know, in the room of Pelor, which I don't think is, that's not a coincidence, you know, like we don't just see the story in the room of Pelor and not have the connection between, between, Paylor and, and the Matron of Vengeance that we have now. Um, but to go back to your question, Jen, about what does what is it like for you for us to have like knowing the like I do you feel like a a, a debt or does Nappy feel like a debt to the Raven Queen? Yes, absolutely, I think so. Um, she feels a sense of of obligation to right a wrong, like in the moments like watching watching what Nephthysiket did, watching the betrayal of her sister. Like her sister killed the Raven Queen, or attempted to, at least. So Nephthysiket in those moments did did what she thought she needed to do. She shunted the Raven Queen somewhere where it was like, you'll be better here. Not better, but safe. Yeah because this is all I can do. I don't have the power to do anything else. Yeah. And my sister is now dead, has betrayed. And then like, I think about, you know, what Tim was talking about, about how the rave, like Nephthysiket, part of her ascension to godhood was her paying hundreds of years of penance 
by building the tomb of the Raven Queen. Nephysicet crafted all of that by her own hand. It took every body from Manta. Obviously spoke to every body from Manta. And put them where they needed to go. And encased them for safety. And like, it, Nepi feels a profound sense of awe for her goddess who took like the diligence to do this and I think I think Nepi also feels a sense of like you know like the the the, the priestesses at Philenis and the temples they they honor the raven queen in the old ways like their ways were folded in to yeah. the order and Nepi's wondering should we have done more should we have, should there have been more preservation? Should there have been more honoring? Right. Especially when, when the Raven Queen called Nephthysicet the usurper. That it's like, no, like that's, uh. that it's like, I don't think Nephthysicet wanted godhood. I don't know. But. That speaks to Matt's Vecna theory too, that like. You know, she doesn't see that that part of Nepsisica, like the the penance that she's paid and like the things she's gone through, like to try and like honor her. Vecna's just been like, she took your place. She sucks. Yeah. Boo. Well, and even um, the even the like know? the fostering in of Kenku into like every Kenku yeah. that has that has wanted to be part of the order has been welcomed in with open arms. Um, and so I think like with no no sense of obligation it's just like well we're here and we will we will protect you if this is something that you want um so i think nepi feels a profound sense of like this is my this is my burden this is mine to carry right here on yeah. my shoulders because my this is this is a continuation of my goddess's story and as like her chosen has the you know nebi was called to be high priestess she wasn't just given it she was called by her goddess she's like okay well you called me so i follow you and i do this for you um and i think nebi feels a profound sense of wanting to wanting to assuage and instill compassion i think and to assuage the anger and the cold hurt. And just be like, you don't know the full story. Or here is another. She, yeah. Maybe she just needs a hug, you know? Honestly, like, the Raven the last time probably she needs a, hug. a big fucking hug. So <laughs> just, okay. Uh, I'll learn the big handy hand spell. And oh, then nice. Letters and I will hug her together with the big, big hands. And she'll be fine. Yeah. That's, that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> so Nephthysicat put the Raven Queen into this the negative energy plane negative energy plane what was the intention with that to get her away from the situation to get her out of there in a place where nobody else would hurt her to my so knowledge then, so as, then, as far as Tim has described it to me so then Nephthysicat becomes a god why do you think she leaves the Raven Queen in, in the negative energy plane at that point? That's a great question. I don't know. I think, I think it's, I think that there has something to do with, I mean, power probably feels really nice. I can imagine that Nephthysicet enjoys her position. Um, you know, having a very devout group of people who worship her a job that she does a place in a pantheon and i i don't know it's I, really I, hard to find good health care in karen so she's like sure. you know what i a, part of me wonders whether job. part of me wonders whether she could go get her back there is like i don't know if she tr i have no idea i can't speak to the like i, I don't mm -hmm. know if she tried 
maybe she did. All, maybe. all it takes is a banishment spell, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. To bring back a so god. Yana, Yana did it. Whoops. Yeah. Whoops. A whoopsie. Um, but like, Yana I don't feels know. bad about that one. <laughs> I don't know if she tried. I have no idea. I, ne- I don't think Neppy's ever. Neppy also has, like, I wouldn't say. I think Neppy has some sense of, like, I hate to use the word blind devotion, mm-hmm. but there is a, like, there is a very resi- like the one there's a mm-hmm. lot of things she questions in her life and no, that's not her faith mm-hmm. right yeah i'm i'm interested just like as a thought about this because i hadn't thought about it until just now yeah like if if nephysicat loses the raven queen yeah. is heartbroken about it and carries on in her stead because it has a job that has to be done that is not a usurper. Mm-hmm. And but if if she has the ability to bring the Raven Queen back and leaves her there for two thousand years, yeah. I I still don't know if that exactly fits that that title, but it is a it is a reasonable scenario where the Raven Queen would be pretty pissed about that absolutely the acting manager yeah yeah the acting manager who will not let you back in the building i think i think that like (laughs) until neppy finds reason to contrary or evidence Mm -hmm. to contrary i think she has to believe that nephysicate was trying to act in the raven queen's best interest because why yeah and there may be i can imagine there's so much guilt there um, but I think until Ep- Nepi sees reason to contrary, she's she's gonna believe that Nephysicate acted in the best interests. Because I think <laughs> it was an interesting conversation we were talking about. Maybe this was after the session or last night. I don't remember. But we were talking about you know like how you as heroes often have to. I think you said it, Matt, like you often have to just hold on to the fact that you white knuckling, was it that you used the phrase? Like you're white knuckling the fact that you're trying to do good. And I think Nep- Nepi white knuckles her faith as a like, my goddess is doing the work that she needs to do. And I think something for me is that I've always never held out that Nephysicate is a good goddess. She's a neutral goddess neppy has neppy started out of the party quite neutral about a lot of things and has moved into that like quite good space but at the end of the day it is work so i don't know i don't know neppy's white knuckling her faith because i think that that's all baby girl can do right now (laughs) i i find it so so interesting that we are both good characters of neutral gods yes right I love that. Cal- I Callie love that. too. Yeah. yeah. Like Callie, Ca- like Melora is like, oh, let the trees grow. Like, oh, fuck y'all. Like <laughs> it's yeah. Very, very interesting. Um, The new experience network asked, was the Raven queen helping the party after she was brought back? Uh, no. Well, yes, she did help the party, but it was for fealty. There was a, a debt. Yeah, there was, was a price. There was a price. Neppy made a bargain and asked, please give us a chance in the city. And um, why did she help if she might not uh, like <laughs> Neppy's like bigger Neppy? Or does she like? I think that the Raven Queen had machinations of what she wanted to do long before she got back to the material plane. Once she got out of the negative any place. Like, I think, you know, if, if, if Matt's theory is to be to given any weight... You've got Vecna whispering in your ear for 2,300 years. You have time to plan. Like, she didn't come back at the Raven Queen and then all of a sudden decide, ooh, people suck and I want my vengeance. She's like, I am the matron of vengeance. This is yeah. my aesthetic now. Like, this is yeah, what I yeah. do now. Um, and yeah, she, she came think... back with plans in place, I think. I think also when she came totally. back originally, we were optimistic that she had that she she was going to be vengeful against the evil gods, not against the good gods. Yeah, 
Yeah, we were very we, optimistic. We were well, like, we, ooh, cool, vengeance we, god. Well, like, we had just seen that she was killed by an actor of There is Dune. Yep. And that she was saved from death by Nepthysicat, and that was that. And so when we she come out, we're like, okay, she might be crazy and have lost it in this, crazy, in this you know? plane, <laughs> but she might be super powerful and just go around murdering evil gods. And I'm like, yeah. not yeah. super worried about that. Just in, in the grand belt. And she did fly into the abyss and do some stuff down and, there. So like, yeah, vengeance it's for everybody. It's really, I mean, we sort of had an idea as players, like narratively, it would make sense that eventually she calls back with something that is super terrible. Yeah. But as players, like we didn't know that she was inherently going to ask for something bad until she did. And like, we also didn't have the piece of knowledge that the call, a call was put out for aid. Like we had mm -hmm. no, we had no idea that a call was put out for aid by her. And that like, I know we had said that like, this was maybe two sessions ago in Chatwater. We had talked about like, what if she's wanting revenge on the entire Pantheon because they all turned her back on her. Or maybe it was just Paylor. Maybe she's starting with Paylor to make a met to send a message and she's just going to work her way through the entire Pantheon. I think she, I mean, based on the knowledge we have, she is wanting restitution and revenge on the entire Pantheon that saw what was happening and either couldn't help because they were waylaid with their own difficulties or actively chose not to. Okay. 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 What about, mm -hmm. what if none of them ever got that call? What um, if Vecna blocked the call or well, someone so, else did? So what I'm saying is like, what if, what if like, what if when she was sent into this plane with Vecna's dagger, like she didn't put out the call was while Vecna's she was dagger? being stat or sorry, Thera's Dune's dagger. Yeah. Um, I, I, at the moment I'm considering it the evil God dagger. I'm yeah. sure they all, they the all had their, dagger. Bad they all dagger. put, they all put their sort of sprinkle in there. Um, but so she's, bad she's the dying bad sprinkle dagger. <laughs> and she doesn't put out the call on the material plane, uh -huh. but she's, shunted into the the shadow plane or the negative yeah. energy plane before she puts out her call and then she's just yeah. yelling in that plane and nobody can hear her oh, that's and heartbreaking. then and then the dagger is like they're ignoring you uh and that's the start of like twisted evil raven queen yeah that'd be a very like interesting conversation uh to have with one of like the gods like asking like did you even hear her i i hope it just in like my beautiful heart of hearts is that like i know that kokanee has had these like wonderful visions of like you know when the gods came down and met like he's seen you know visions of like arathis akadi grumbar and moradin Pelor having these meetings around the time of the dawn war because i mean like kokanee's had experience with arathis you know We've, we've all met Arathis, but, like, none of you have ever seen Nephthysicat in a, like, a true, yeah. like, this is my god. Hello. Hi, this is my goddess. It's nice to meet you all. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, okay, to have... hugged Arathis one time. You, you did. That was cool. Yeah. And it's just, it's, again, I love the difference in relationship between <laughs> both of our homeschool kids and their goddess god mommies. moms god moms yeah um <laughs> i love the difference in relationship neppy's like whatever you say absolutely what can i do now and kogan he's like mom please <laughs> mom it's me pick up it's me, your favorite, it's me your favorite kid kogan buckwild um <laughs> you but, have like you have like 10 followers right now you have time for me i'm your favorite um <laughs> <laughs> is that matter is that kokanee that's matt Kokini. we're doing our best okay we're all doing our best <laughs> i just want i want to i would want to see like what a cool thing it would be to watch the gods to have our characters bear witness to gods working out their shit with each <laughs> other for once rather than taking toll on the mortals on plane just simply because we're smaller and less powerful than they are. Oh. 
Well, I just had a, I just, ha- I just had a, a, a thought. I don't, I don't know if I can say it because now it's an actionable goal of Yana. So I, I don't think I can say it. You can just tell us secrets. There's nobody here. Okay, lean in close. It's here. for a secret. Yeah, there's it's nobody for here. A secret. There's nobody here. So, yeah, Matt, can you zoom in? There's nobody yeah. here. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. just waiting for yeah. Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me, give me, Matt, give me the Matt. Beats. No, no, we're we're up here. Okay, we're up thank here. you. Great um, thank you. So you know how sometimes. Uh, I'll lean in really close. You know how sometimes uh, when I watch Chatwater and, and y'all are talking about me, you're like, yeah, yeah, a voice of reason. You know, sometimes she pipes in, uh, sometimes she doesn't, and it sets people straight. Yana's goal is to be the referee between two gods going at it and being like, hey, you being stupid <laughs> and you need to stop. I never, I want, I want that like, so much. Like, imagine how good that would be. I want oh, that so man. much. Wow. If I have an opportunity, I'll take it. Um, Tim, get out. And here. we're back. And, and you're all back. Hello. Welcome. Um, <laughs> well, where'd you go? <laughs> <where'd> you... <laughs> Ferex just said in the chat, uh, I realized Nepi could probably orchestrate a therapy session between Arathis and Nepthys again. <laughs> I don't think those two need the therapy for now. <laughs> like, I think those two are doing pretty good. And I can probably imagine that since the heads of like their, their, their favorites are married, I can imagine they've spoken once or twice. <laughs> they probably had a conversation <laughs> or two. Do you think they had conversations about you two before, before you were a thing? Like, Marcy, <laughs> your chosen one's hanging out with my chosen one. Ooh. Eh. <laughs> just been, just been like, it's like the meet the parents. Just like an embarrassing god mom stuff. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Just sharing weird <laughs> things that they've. Yeah. No. I think that. I think that those two gods have probably had some interaction. I mean, we really don't know because while Tim has used the canonical gods from mm-hmm. D, D, like fifth edition D and D, the way that he portrays them is not necessarily like in fifth edition D, right? Like, especially like we're talking, you know, Sean will often talk about how much he loves Paylor in this universe, that Paylor's a dick. Like Paylor is often, you know, portrayed to be this paragon of the sun and goodness and all that kind of good law and shit. And he's like, nah, Paylor's just a dick. Like he's an asshole. Um, so I think it's fascinating. Uh, I have no fucking idea what is going to happen next, next session. I just don't know. Um, also, bef- while we're, while we're on this train of talking about what's going to happen with the gods, tell me, and we were talking about, and I think, um, New Experiences Network was talking about this in the chat. Tell me what it was like for y'all when we got back to Wolfreen, kind of like the anti, most anticlimactic way to return to Wolfreen. We just stepped through a portal and there we were in like a tenement district. Oh gosh. It's so oh, nice to see Codus. So I know. Oh, we love he's, Codus. He's nice to us, and there. I'm not worried that it's gonna ruin my life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's the only part. Like, if yeah. any, if anybody else comes up and is like, "Hey guys, how you doing? I hope you're having a good time." I'm like, what do you want? Is this a charm spell? <laughs> I can't. Like, are you trying? I can't. I'm I will sorry. not make another pact, Tim. <laughs> Tim, if you're listening right now, this is. is just a Tim secret. If you, if you find a way to kill Codus that makes me cry. I'll 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 make you cry. I'll do it. I'll find a way. Tim Tim says says in chat, Codus will always be good. Yeah, that's what and I'm worried about. Tim, Tim always be good and also alive for the entire campaign. That's <laughs> alive what I need forever. Just give us one. No, there's already um, there's yeah. there's Jar, one character. He love he, he won't ever love, kill Jar. Yeah, Callie and Kamea and Jar have queer tragedy armor. They do. They do. We've, we've We've said it. Um, uh, yeah, seeing Codus was real good. Um, but it was, feels, I, but it feels bad being in Wolfrey. It feels like, so bad. So yeah, bad. I feel so bad right now. Like, I, especially too, I think she feels guilty. Like, uh, every time Callie goes to see her wife, oh, Yana feels gosh. really guilty. Yeah. Um, Cause like you two have each other, like you have your religions, but like, you know, the most important people, like are here with you like all the time and like letters says that all the time and yana's like <sighs> like my whole family like i like you know like she's like oh should i have called them and like told them to go somewhere safe and like 
she realized like too when she was talking to the sun speaker like there's no point there's no point in telling my family go run and be safe my whole city can't do that yeah. like my uncle's the freaking governor he's not gonna like he's like Kamea, right like he wouldn't go and be safe like there's uh yeah so it feels bad feels bad like being in the place that's supposed to make you happy and you're just like yeah it's 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 home without the homecoming which i think Mm -hmm. is the feeling that the new experience network was touching on before like now that i recognize that it was about codis um uh you all were relieved but none of us like let go of our breath like we're holding our breath yeah right now there was there's so much anxiety about what we have to do and just like Gar Yang so, never ends. Gar Yang doesn't end. Like there is so much of Gar Yang that like we'll have to go back. Like I guarantee you. Like I know we had joked about we're never going back to Gar Yang again, but we're gonna have to go back to Gar Yang at some I point. I still don't I still don't mind Gar Yang. <laughs> of all the places, Gar Yang has not been the worst to me. Actually, Original... that's true. I hate the Earth Elemental Plane. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the Earth even Elemental now, Plane sucks. Even now, the Earth Elemental Plane sucks, and that's after we we are, it's no longer the worst place ever. Yeah, I think I, we're gonna we're gonna have to go back to Gar Yang. I I that's what I, Tim does with places we hate. We have to keep going back. I, How I'm, many times did he pull us back into the Earth Elemental Plane? This is that was time True. number three. Number True. three. So <laughs> many times. <laughs> after I said how much I hated it so many times. Kick S fireball. What's the I, point? I think that this this arc is going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah. I think we I think we have we have I think there's like one last card that comes down, and then I think things go to shit. Mm-hmm. Like I think it is very possible we're about to get critical role chroma conclave style. How do you guys feel about the sun speaker? Like Kato's dad. Do you think he's bad news? I think he's bad news. I just, Yana doesn't, but like, I just have like a weird feeling about him that he's bad news. I think Nepi feels like he is on the side of what is good and serving Paylor. You know, like good to the fact that it serves Paylor. Like if we think about what we've seen of the Sun Speaker so far, we, we know that he and his Pat, like the he and the clerics of, of um, fuck Paylor, were the ones who sealed the rift, like at the oh, yeah. gates. Don't oh, keep yeah, I like remember that. like they did that, um, and like you know if so they're obviously they're not on they're not evil, but I think that it's more of a self serving, right? Like hmm. there's there's I don't think there's an aspect of self sacrifice that is like the first choice, I- right? I think that I think that like but, the 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 vibe that I get from Paylor is like the concept of order through power. Yeah. Uh and order of what would be considered a vaguely good setup for the world as much as he can, but but it is through power and so his his actions themselves aren't always inherently good. Yeah. They are in maintenance of power so that he can maintain order which he sees as vaguely more good. And so I see them as the same like I think they are, they are, they are power and order first, but for what they consider to be vaguely lofty moral standards. Yes. And so I consider them to be like not somebody I'd have a beer with, and probably would do something that I wouldn't love, but probably not like a stab us in the back. Yeah. Sort of, sort of group. Yeah, and I think Nepi particularly, which is something that I. What, which she said to Cato and also to the sun speaker too. Like Nepi knows her place around the folks of Paylor. Like she knows that they would know the history, right? Like there is, I think that, you know, that we don't know a lot about the gods relationships to each other, but when your God sends some solar angels after someone, cause they're a bit bitter, you know that, right? Or you know that like a, a priestess of Nephtysiket spurned your god on purpose and said, fuck you in a very prolific display. So Nepi's, Nepi's temple would be quietly respectful of the equinox of the Dawn Father. Likely wouldn't participate in like any way, but wouldn't outwardly 
be, you know, uh, they wouldn't never, they would never like diss Paylor or like go against pay like what that says because Nephthys again is about balance. But I don't think, you know, Nepi showing up at the temple and wanting to talk to Cato and being like, I know what it means if I'm, like, you should understand that what it means if I'm here. Things are bad. Like, I wouldn't be here if they weren't life or death. And also recognizing the, like, the level to which we're at, of what just what we're asking the sun speaker and i know we talked a little bit about this the other day um in just like when we were just chatting about the campaign but it's like a t- tim and tim tim was like he's like i had no idea what you were gonna do um when with the options and um something that i love that tim said was that uh, tim and i have talked about was the fact that like he's like i gave you two two options to take or not to take and you didn't take you didn't do either of those things. You immediately <laughs> said, What is the third option? Yeah. And he said and, and we were talking about this last night. He's like, and that what to did me you expect is, him. I know. <laughs> and he's like, and that to me is what makes you folks heroes. Is because that's what a hero does. A hero looks for the alternative. Um, which I thought was really lovely and warmed my heart. And Timothy. I know, Tim, he's so sweet. We love him. We love you, Tim. Um, and also, too, that, like, of course we weren't, we we weren't going to take, we, we couldn't take Cato. Or at least not take him and just leave him. <laughs> like, we may take him, but we're not abandoning him, right? And there is also not the option of we can't take him because of what it will, the information that we now have about what it will do to us. Yeah. Not as like people, but also to our entire bloodlines and everyone we love and yeah. care about. But the fact that it's like there has to be another way. And again, another conversation Tim and I had had about like how going to talk to the Sun Speaker was potentially one of the most difficult options we could have chosen. We're trying to convince a man to let his son go before a god who likely wants him dead. So your sons want it as a sacrifice, but we want to go together. Can we, we all go we together? We want to do this as a team. It's a party. Come on, come on, come on. Um, yeah, wild, wild. We chose a wild option. I didn't even know where we were going with it. As we were doing it, I was like, is this where we're going? Okay. Well, I think that's for one of the reasons, like when Letters was like, to, like Nepi was about to say something and he was like, no, 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 no. I was like, well, we have to be honest with this guy. We have to be fully, completely transparent. There was a time for secrets and hidden, hidden knowledge. And there is a time for laying literally all our cards on the table and being like, please help us. Please. Um, Oh, we've got some questions coming up in the chat. Mm. Uh, what were our characters' thoughts about the conversations with Cato? Specific about letters wanting to be brutally honest with Cato? Um, let's do that one first. Boy. Um, I'm, I mean, I, I, I'd say, like, I think going to see Cato, if we are not brutally honest, was the worst choice. Like, because if we're not straightforward with Cato and and the Sun Speaker, then what we are is we are the people who are coming to steal Cato to get our bounty off. Mm -hmm. Like, unless all of those cards are on the table, uh, we are that. Um, Only by them knowing, like, exactly, like, we we basically had to show up and be like, "This this is the situation all the cards on the table, this is where we are at. Yeah. And this is what we think is the best way forward. What do you think? And yeah. that's the only way we can do that where the person, they don't, it's not inherently dishonest and inherently manipulative of what we're doing then. If we show up and be like, hey, the Raven Queen's trying to kill Paylor, like we're, we have to go deal with that. And then don't tell them about the deal. Like we show up and the Raven Queen's like, thank you for fulfilling our deal. And like, surprise, now we're the bad guys. Like that, yeah. there we go. Bing, bang, yeah. boom. 
Well, and I think that there's so much about, like, I think it's for Neppy is that it's like the second that she made that deal, she was like, I am going to wear, I'm literally wearing the thing that I've done. The yes, like the, 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 the cost that we paying, like, yes, my loved one, like these, these five people are, uh, how many, six, five, six, six, five, six, with class, six. Um, these people are wearing what I have done, but like, and that's, you know, with the brands, but also I think Neppy's taking it, it the act of Neppy saying, I did this. I was the one who did this is for her. And it's an act of taking responsibility that I think she need, like she feels she needs to take that. She's like, this is what I did. I did this. I said, yes, it was an impossible situation. I was alone. And I was trying to give my party a chance to prevent utter fucking chaos. And I don't know if I had a better option, but I did this and I need to wear it. And I, I, I have to wear it in front of people who will directly be involved with the consequences from that. There's no, there's no hiding from that. And Neppies, I don't think ever been one to hide or shy away from things that are hard. Um, and I think for her, it's an act of, it's an act of maintaining the balance. It's an act of saying like, I am part of a bigger system. I, yes, I have choice and yes, I have free will. And I am also part of a bigger system and I need to wear my role in that. Um, so I'm, I'm, it's, it's weird. I'm talking about her as if she's, she's, she doesn't live in here also, but like, I'm, I'm proud of her for that. I'm proud of her for stepping into that space of being like, yeah, I did this and I can do, I, I have done this. And, you know, does Neppy regret the decision that she made to give fealty? I think she's still parsing through that. I, I don't think she does. She regrets the consequences of it or, or has, she holds, she holds pain and sees the pain in others about the consequences from it. But you know, and she's talked about this. I've talked about this with her at the table. Um, she wanted to give, she needed to give the party a chance. Because if she had died, there would have been no other way to close the rift. Because she held the magic to close the rift. And that was, that was it. So I, that's. Yeah, Something I have also been wanting to talk to you two about specifically is because we've been playing this campaign together since the beginning. I am so curious about, yeah, the OG three, the we three of three. us. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> Don't even. I said, hey, I said I got one more. I That's got it, it out. That's Jen, it. you still done. have one. Don't forget. That's it. It's done. No more for you, Matt. You've used up. You've used up your one. Till um, next time. Oh god damn it. Um <laughs> tell me what it's like. Jen, we can't hear you. Jen, you're I can't hear you. No. No, nothing. No. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're mime. You're mime now? Yeah. Oh, in a box. You're knocking on the box of chat water. Nope. How about now? Uh, now. Yes. There we go. Okay. I was saying, um, one, my internet was being bad. That's why my mic cut out. So I didn't actually hear Matt. So he gets to do it again. And second, oh. Matt, did you see, Matt, did you see that I gave you an Indiana Jones hat? Because I didn't oh, know how to draw Kokanee's head, except for that one time I drew Kokanee in your book. Thank you so much. Which was much. so hard. It was so good. Thank, thank you so you much. Thank you so much. Also, I'm so glad that you didn't hear it. And so we'll, I'll save it Therefore, for Therefore, yeah. he gets one more. Well, it Emma rhymes. heard it, so I only it I only have half. Oh, okay. So you only have to say half of it. I only I only get half of it. Yeah. I've oh. used half, the other half up. Yeah. Do you do you get to text and me my, the second and half? And my and my patience just starts to. <laughs> to yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, I held back. Like you started saying other god names, and I was like. 
that one rhymes with something, don't, but don't. I didn't say anything, um, did I? No, no guys, I care no. about you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I, I, and I know because, and I'll go back to my question now. Um, yes, sorry. The, the, the Lore, of, the Lore Mobile. The Lore Mobile. The three of us have been playing this campaign together from the beginning as players. And we have watched this campaign go from, you know, story driven to, and, and Tim with Tim's, you know, skill increasing as a DM and the trust in the three of us and the trust between us and Tim and Tim and vice versa, just the trust and vulnerability and genuineness being placed at the table. What is it like as a player for you to consistently experience your character going through these moral quandaries? Like, a lot of D&D isn't, like, this may sound really elitist and shitty, but it's not the way I intend it. Like, a lot of D&D doesn't put you in unfathomable moral quandaries like we experience every week at the table. Comics for a quandary with me. Comics for a quandary. Um, like, tell me what yeah. it's like for oh, yeah. you to, to experience this mm-hmm. level of, like, emotional intensity and moral quandary at a D&D table with your friends and... Mm-hmm folks you care about well go matt go i will say you are right that not like most D &D games don't play like this and that's not to say that this way is better than any other way no certainly not like Mm -hmm. if you want to you know roll up some stat heavy characters and fight a dungeon yeah like and and you know shoot the shit with your friends like that's the exact perfect way for you to play D D. absolutely or just ask but, everybody that you run into about whether or not sea vampires exist oh my god that's mm. that's our D campaign jen's <laughs> jen's like off the rails <laughs> trying to figure out hey, whether or not sea vampires hey, are a real thing i am both i am both the lore keeper in that campaign but i am also the bard in that campaign so i don't know what you expect from me yeah, yeah, <laughs> you did I that know. You did that. That's what you get as the DM. You played yourself. That's on me as the DM. (laughs) Uh, But uh, how is it? Uh, Some weeks it's terrible. Some weeks. Awful. Some weeks it's so fucking bad where we end our campaign (laughs) episode and I'm not good and it wasn't Uh a good experience. Like it was (laughs) like. like, um, We've had so many car rides home from your house. Yeah. Where we were like. As regardless of how many of us were in the car because we all used to commute over to yours like so we, all of us were just like dead like listening to music yeah. and like mm, I can't I can't yeah. talk to you right now because I'm emotionally drained by the DD like play. like <laughs> like the day after we had the episode in Bacall where Emma or Nepi made the deal with the Raven Queen like I Matt was not okay <laughs> Like, Neither like was we talked I. about bleed. That was not a good day for me as a human. I was upset and worried and angry that day. And that is part of what happens when you play this sort of D&D. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now, you become so invested. The yeah. flip side is when things go right, you get like highs that you cannot get through other methods of D&D because you get to do all the cool statty like oh I did 100 damage in a turn through a backflip but then you also get that emotional payoff after after the what can sometimes be very difficult and don't don't get me wrong I'm not leaving most games being like oh that sucked but like five or six of our our 200 episodes or 100 and something episodes that we've played? Uh, 127. Yeah, five or six for sure. But like oh, yeah. I've left I've left 20 or 30 being like, fuck, wow. that was such good D&D. Yeah. And I think oh, for me, God. even some of the ones that are like the toughest d and I'm like, this is such, this is like the, the still so good. Still so good. And it's like, I, I get, <laughs> I get the emotional high off of my emotional yeah. investment. That it's just like this, what feels so cool is that like I am emotionally invested at a table where everyone around me is also as emotionally invested and it's not weird for me to be as emotionally invested as I am. You know, I think that's really amazing and it's a really cool, a really cool thing that happens at so many D&D tables. Um, 
and I can only really speak from my experience firsthand, but like this campaign has been happening for so long and, and with people that, you know, we, we, um, we care about so deeply that it's, the emotionality feels so safe. So like, even if there is tough D and D days or tough emotional days that it's like, I, I never feel like I'm, I'm left abandoned by my friends or my party. I think Jen's frozen. Uh, Nope, she's back. You're back. Ish. So we have a we have a question from the New Experience Network. Did it feel like an emotional or role playing setback once Not we started totally. streaming? Oh, now I'm back. Oh, okay. You're back. You're back. You're back. Um, and I'll, I'll ah. mm, okay. okay, okay. Um, I'll, I'll say like, I think that the only it, I don't think it was streaming that created it. I think it was not being able to play in person. Yeah. Like it's not the nature of being online. It is the nature of being on Zoom that changes D and D. Yeah. Like yeah. having the moments where you're sitting around a table with your good good friends and like holding hands, watching this 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 tense difficult moment and overcoming it is an emotional experience that you can't fully get over Zoom. Yeah. You can get you can get pieces of it for sure, but you're not there with you know. I am not sitting on a small cushion between M and Jen while we're like biting our nails so worried about what's about to happen. Yeah. Amidst a um. sea of toddler toys and living room furniture. <laughs> I I totally agree. Um I think that I don't think it was I think it was if if you remember back to the earliest one of the early chat waters that we did talking about like the stages of group dynamics like storming, you know, forming uh storming for me, norming, storming, performing. Anyway, whatever the order is, it's Emma's smart most of the time. Um, not currently because I'm tired, but we had to re figure out how to play with each other online because that was the yeah. session we started streaming was session two, right? And so like the or like session our second session ever playing over Zoom. We had never played online before. We had only ever played in person. So we had to relearn how to play together in the middle of a pandemic where we're all like trying to figure out how to exist as humans in the middle of a pandemic and also continue this game that we love and all rely, like not rely on, but, but use as, as, and, and have and get to enjoy as a beautiful emotional space that we get to partake in each week. And the thing about being streaming while doing this is y'all just had you y'all just watched it right like you all just watched us go through a recalibration and learning yeah, how totally. to play together right and like when we start playing in person again again because it's not an if it's a when you will watch us recalibrate to playing in person and um you know good fork um, you bring up a fantastic comment of like, you know, we do well with party communication over Zoom and not a lot of over talking. That is because we we talked about what it's like to stream online. Yeah. Like we had we have meet we had meetings and like discussions about how to change our play or to, you know, extend upon our play to make this something we could do online. Like all D D games have crosstalk, right? Like if you're sitting oh, in a yeah. room together. We we had we a were lot terrible of at we it. We were bad at crosstalk. Yeah, like because we, I mean, like you know, like we'd go off on a bit. Like we love our bits, but like usually how that would work, like offline, is like you know, Sean and and Tim would riff, and then like the rest of us would like kind of tune in and out um, <laughs> while we like do our own thing, or like have our own bit on the side at the same time. Like I, th yeah. I think in a lot of ways, Zoom improved our play in that way. Absolutely. Um, it's also made me very spoiled as a person, um, like going into other Zoom meetings or like real life meetings uh, now that those are a thing. Um, <laughs> like, cause we are very considerate and we look like, you know, when someone else has had something to say, we're like, okay, let's circle back to, you had something to say. You should, you should get to say your thing now. Whereas like in real life, I'm dealing with like adults who like don't have conversations about that all the time. And they're like, and I'm gonna just jump over you and say what I wanna say. And I'm like, Cool. That's cool. I get it. You don't, you don't, you don't have a cool day group, day group like I do. It's fine. <laughs> I think, I think it says a lot about the respect we not only have for the game, but also each other. 
totally. that it's like we will circle back to each other and we've made we talk a lot about and I know we've talked about this on Chatwater in the past too like on our episodes when we talked about how to be you know how to exist and, and make your games more narratively focused if that's something you want um, and how to be a good 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 c- considerate role player you've got to throw the ball right like yep. you can't just hold the ball the whole time you have to throw the ball and you also have to know how to catch the ball right so it's about it's about being able to balance it off your your players um and i think that like um the ferex brings up a really interesting point about you know the surprisingly hard part about zoom especially with D is that it damages the dynamic for having a side conversation but again good fork brings up the comment i was literally just going to say is the removal of headphones Right. Like we, you know, Callie was able to have that aside with Kindry entirely through that, through the whole thing about headphones. Um, And I think that those are those are beautiful mechanics that that you can use in D&D and online role play or even like messaging stuff. Right. Like I, Mm -hmm. I think about how, you know, a whisper, like when we were playing in person Tim was just like, come here, I'm going to whisper something to you. And we would actually get, you know, within like two inches of another person when you were allowed to do that. I know. When you were allowed to touch other human beings um, without really fears about getting sick. I've been the before times. Um, But like the cool thing about a whisper was then you got to do to do what you wish with the information from that, to keep it, share it, do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And, and, and now do with doing whispers this way, our, our audience, you wonderful, beautiful people out there get to be in on the whisper. And which is, which is cool in its own way. It changes the dynamic of it, but it also is, is kind of cool too, that you get the full story of what's going on. Um, mm-hmm. And those, I think the heads out, the headphones conversations. Yes, you are the Inquisitors. You have all of the Whispered Secrets from the Whispered One, a.k.a. Tim. Which monster will you create, listeners? <laughs> <laughs> um, trying to They're think all, if... like, typing to Tim right now. They're, like, little whispers. So, so as we come nearing the end of our episode for this evening, give me your, give me your, like, give me a prediction. What do we what what happens next time? It can be an off the wall, out of there theory. It can be a you think this is like you are this certain this is going to happen next. Tell me what happens next session. What do we do oh. next week, next Saturday? Um I am banking on and this is my ridiculous bank, but I am banking on something wacky happening with Paylor or, or his will. Like, you know, like anything from like Paylor being like, Sun Speaker, you sacrifice your son. Ah to like his will being like, Ah, you sacrifice your dad. I hate Paylor. Like surprise. Like, I don't know. I, I, I think something wacky is going on there. Like the secrecy of his will. Yeah. It's really spooky to me. Um, and we've never really been able to dive into that. And I know that like we're keeping Finn and uh like it where he is because that's where Adam is right now. But I'd be really interested to see how like that kind of his will stuff plays in like ooh. I think it'll tie in for spicy sure. lore I think it will yeah. I think I know for sure when Finning comes back like Tim will have cooked up some him, him and Tim will have cooked up some stuff that he's been up to and, ooh. but yeah I am I am banking on some weird paler his will shit happening I just don't think that relationship is 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 totally oh. uh mm-hmm. uh like on the level i think oh, his no. will may have gone rogue like that's what i yeah. think i think there's some weird like shit shaking i carry that. out I... the will of paylor but i get none of the credit i think yeah yeah i this is not my guess but i i have been party his will is a bad guy yeah for quite a while like uh, and I would be like maybe working with the betrayer gods, bad oh, guy. Shit, corrupted yeah. by the betrayer gods. Dang. But my thing is, next two sessions, a god will die. Oh shit! Any predictions on which, which one? one is it? 
It's Garl, isn't it? Is it Garl? It's Garl Glitter Gold. It is Garl I'm Glitter I'm fine if it's Garl. Yana doesn't super care. <laughs> I think there is a scenario where we show up, the Raven Queen brushes us aside, sacrifices Cato, goes up towards the Pantheon, and a series of gods die at her hand in the next two sessions. Fuck. Casually. Just a casual. Casual. Mm. Casual. Half the Pantheon gone. I... I think that there's going to be two sessions before we get to the moment where we see everything that happens. I think the next, um, I think the next session is probably going to cover the lead up to us going to Manta or whatever we do in the process of going to Manta. Or if we go to Manta or try and stop the thing that's going to happen in Manta. And then the next, the session after that will be everything that plays out. And the fallout of that. Whether we fight a god. Whether the gods fight each other and we just watch. I think that there's going to be the next two, two two-ish sessions or so are going to be some big big stuff that is going to shake up the way that religion exists on Wolfar. For sure. I think, I I don't know, my big prediction, Nephthysica comes down and she's going to try and talk some sense into Raven, Vengeance Mommy. Kitty Mommy and Vengeance Mommy are going to have a chat. Is what I Curiosity think. killed the cat, so... This is true. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh. Um, so I don't know. I think there's going to be some, yeah, questionings of faith. I think there's going to be some, I think there's going to be some deals made, some, some bargains, some tentative alliances struck for the purpose of saving the world as is key Blackwater. But yeah, I, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for some, for some to white knuckle the fact that we're trying to be good for the next two sessions and <laughs> until we get our fucking beach episode. <laughs> Tim Carlson, one day, give us a beach. I don't want anything possessed on that beach. I don't, I don't want your magical items. I don't want your moral quandaries. No moral quandaries. Uh, I don't want them. I just want black water. And a no beach. Krakens either, Tim. Tim. Tim, get the heck out of here with that. Tim, Tim, I just want a beach. Classic beach. I want to spend. Episode. I want to spend two hours rolling to learn how to surf. You realize our characters probably don't go camping for fun, hey? No. You know, like that's not a thing they do. They're no, like, no, no, uh, <laughs> we can't we've done that. No, no, no. We don't do that anymore. I. That's I, something. Yeah. I regret about bringing the mansion into play. We don't we don't take watch, and that's like some of our most beautiful role play. Now that we have the mansion, we're like, eh, we go to sleep. I think there, but I mean, I think there have been times in the past where we've, like, not necessarily taken watch, but we've found mm-hmm. moment. We still find moments. We still we do we do. They're just different. Yeah, just but it's different. not. But it you know I I enjoyed the uh, yeah Finn and yeah you're on watch now find something to talk about. It's like. Yeah, kiddo, how you doing? (laughs) Bad? Ooh, oh no. (laughs) Maybe Yana just uses her seventh level spell slot for something else now. And you just actively choose not to have a magic in place. I do have a pretty spicy spell. What I I would say is I think like one upside of it is that I think we still have those conversations, but a lot of them aren't framed by being terrified and on watch. True. Like we're having those conversations, but we just like... It's these little moments of 10 minutes in our, our six hours where we just get to be like happy and safe and like, you know, eat dinner together. Yeah. Yeah. It is nice. I think, I think about the one that we had like after, you know, Yana like got the mansion fully cast on the hillside with the giants and it's 
letters and Limerick and Finnan in the kitchen just talking about working out and Limerick just talking that he's been in love with a girl. And it's just like, you can't do that on watch. You can't have Limerick walk around in a towel. Because anyone, if anyone you're terrified ever asked that you're going to die. <laughs> anyone ever asked me, oh, yeah, you play D&D? Sure. I'm going to be like, yeah, I sat there for a three-hour session casting a spell once. Bitch, <laughs> I am serious about my D&D. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, um, a time. Well, I think that is about a good spot for us to wrap up for this evening. Thank you all so much for coming and hanging out. Um, we love doing this for y'all every week. Uh, it is a chance for us to decompress and talk about stuff and we used we have these conversations all the time now we just do them in front of an audience it's it's pretty fun um please come hang out with us on wednesday we will be uh partying it up in true blackwater style uh where we all come hang out uh where all of us are there yanis is there it's it's gonna be a time we're gonna have some adam's tr- gonna be there adam's just gonna adam. be there if you miss adam yes he's gonna come and hang out um so we're all really excited to to like just be sweet baby level three paladins for a change who are just trying to really just have a good time at a party. Maybe, I don't know what Tim has cooked up for us. Uh, So come hang out 8 PM Pacific standard time. Um, And then obviously we're back on Saturday for our main campaign. If you have any questions that didn't get answered uh, in in this chat water, please feel free to DM us on Instagram or come on our discord. Um, post them. There's a lore keeping, there's a chat water lore keeping section. We would love to come hang out with you. Uh, thank you all so much. And uh, Jen, I know it's been a while since you've been on chat water. So we... Good night, everyone. Take good care out there. Bye. Be safe. Be safe.